Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about Teensy microcontrollers. So let's dive right into it. Well, first you have to understand what we are talking about. We are basically talking about a powerful alternative to Arduino. In last episode, we talked about Arduino this time. Uh, while Arduino is quite amazing, awesome and all that, but it has certain limitation. So some people came along, basically one dude and a Kickstarter came along and it's like, bro, we can make something better. So the idea is basically put more of everything. Arduino is good, just more Arduino to it basically more of everything input output pins that is the primary reason for well, utilizing a microcontroller so unless you know how to you make a pcb uh, you are reliant on uh, basically uh, how many pins are uh, you know the manufacturer is giving you because while every microcontroller inherently has a lot of pins to trace them out is very difficult so you are reliant on them so you can easily find same microcontroller same arduino board in different uh, flavors so to say let's say micro versus pro micro pro micro will have less pins and if you want same microcontroller but more pin you have to buy lineardo so that happens you are limited by the manufacturer's uh, wishes to basically even if microcontroller has let's say 100 pins and the uh, board physical board is like only gives you 20 you are stuck at 20 so they are like okay let's solve that let's give as much as we can give that then pulse switch modulation now this is very critical our world relies on pulse switch modulation you must understand it thoroughly like everything uh, in this world relies on from your in Inverters to online UPSs to everything relies on pulse width modulation and interrupts. Now, interrupts simply means uh, you have the ability to directly inject something uh, basically of command of instruction while the code is running. Now, interrupts are not that important if your uh, clock speeds are very fast. But even in then some scenarios, you need interrupts, basically like a power switch. It must have the ability to stop no matter what is happening. That's how you get out of a uh, stuck loop, so to say. So, Arduino. You just amplified it and then the biggest changes that happen is arduino is inherently 8-bit so they went to 32-bit arm core processors so that's the whole point of it now why the heck they went to 32-bit well 8-bit has inherent limitation basically what's the difference between hdr and non-hdr hdr non-hdr uh, non content is 8-bit basically you're watching this video it's 8-bit now 8-bit inherently gives you 256 values like that's maximum it can store that's it the end game over you cannot store more than that now there are many 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 scenarios where you need to store more than that and you will be stuck because the microcontroller inherently is limited now you can do some uh, jiggery and uh, like trying to to figure it out trying to solve it a uh, map uh, like you know larger value into smaller value but again inherently it's not a good option so people need uh, basically sometimes more bit depth and you may need it for let's say you want to build a very powerful cnc machine which has a lot of encoders uh, basically not only motors motor with in, uh, encoders and it's like you know doing what we call adaptive uh, cut and all that those sort of scenarios they need a lot of bit depth otherwise like it will be so slow it will might as well be useless so and not to mention sometimes it will simply not work it won't be slow it may not even work so people need bit depth there is a reason why your computer is now switched to 64 bit you inherently need this then higher clock speed basically uh, if you are familiar with uh, arduino code you know there is a loop and then you write things and then it loops back again it does the whole thing now that speed basically how quickly it can go through uh, basically from is command number one to command number 100 is directly proportional to the megahertz of the processor basically how fast it is so arduino well a good 16 megahertz is more than good enough it's uh, like you know old game controllers or very old computers were running on that so it's it's not uh, a laughing matter it's more than fast enough for let's say you want to make a stabilizer or something like that but it's not very fast so these puppy they went up to 600 megahertz so it's on a different volume so basically your raspberry pi would be in gigahertz your arduino would be 15 megahertz so they are at 600 so they are very very tangibly powerful and they added a lot more io pins so even if you have breadboard io pins which are very easy to use any uh, puff board you can utilize that but they still added a lot of uh, pads so to say because again inherently uh, microcontrollers are micro they are physical small so uh, tracing out every single pin to every single physical pin would be very difficult so they did have pins so if you know what you're doing you can extract even more so you buy let's say something that says hey it only has 15 pins no problem you can add up to 32 they did give you the ability to solder to it so that's another awesome part 
so how, how this whole uh, system works well uh, this was started with a kickstarter system now what you have to understand this inherently the person who built this has a bit of a different approach to it he's not building microcontroller as a like hey uh, i'm gonna build a microcontroller and it's gonna be like you know uh, arduino killer that's not the point of it the main goal was arduino was not sufficient for the music hobbies he had like again uh, he may have like other aspiration and as the project grew he's like hey we can make something even more awesome and that's like you know extra bonus and all that but uh, music was like a very central focus as like something hmm, this must do this well enough so inherently if you read the spec sheet of the system you will see find some uh, very unique things like uh, you know optical audio output and all that jazz uh, there is a reason for that this system is inherently capable of doing some amazing thing with audio uh, if you're familiar with audio industry you must have heard of something known as midi m i d i now midi is very important for music industry like it's not something a luxury it's like necessary so you can have like drum boxes kits and thousands of faders and mixers and all that jazz like there is a whole plethora of things and people can create daft punk music to like you know whole uh, background music of a movie out of that so it's not something like you know ah, it's a small thing no it's it's huge so to make that they inherently had to improve the uh, board its code its compatibility and all that jazz so it can actually truly handle that complex world of audio because again audios are waveform if your waveform is like you know faster than your clock cycle it's not gonna look very good so inherently using arm cortex gives them the power the muscle needed for audio processing and you were like hey dude audio processing does not need too much well yes it does there is a reason why uh, when you see people like uh, sony or apple when they were talking about their like uh, specific uh, noise cancelling microphones uh, noise cancelling headphones and all that they specify it has a microchip and it has like, it can do this much processing and all that this puppy is needed for that so if you truly want to understand audio and process it real time and then uh, synthesize something output of it you need hell lot of a muscle on that so this puppy can do that inherently so that core focus on audio the moment you type midi and uh, teensy you will get a lot of projects and people have done some amazing work with this from uh, like you know some uh, synthesizer box to cardboard box to something complex or something that will mind-bogglingly awesome there is a lot of potential there so it can do quality audio as in like the audio you will listen to it was like no that's good audio it won't be like yeah some cheap uh, you know real tech audio no it's a quality audio it can do some quality audio and if you want to build it you can truly build a DAC basically you can figure out how what happens when you take a very heavy file let's say flag file and what it would take to decode it to make it into a good audio signal and how to filter out harmonics and all that jazz you can do that on this so that again inherently you can also play uh, you know uh, audio files on Arduino but again good luck with that in terms of quality wise so this puppy is has like a lot of muscle in that so which one should you buy like if you want to like hey uh, this suits my need and i want to try uh, the, which one should you buy uh teensy 4.1 has just launched so it's quite amazing and flat out it has almost everything you can think about i mean like uh, teensy took a f user feedback so seriously they're like okay we'll give you a real-time clock you just have to solder on battery packs and all that again that is acceptable because if you want to mass produce something and put it in a box for a very long time it's generally recommended do not put a battery inside it so you get that so you get a lot of things that you do not think about when you are building arduino projects you think within the limitations of that this puppy you flex your muscle basically go yolo as much as you want heck people have made video players out of this puppy so a lot of things can be done and it has 35 pulse width modulation tool that's a lot of pulse modulation channel that's like a lot of pulse modulation it has sd card system built into it so let's say you want to make a weather station and you're like bro uh, i don't want to use raspberry pi it's overkill for me because again raspberry pi has to run a whole operating system then it has to run your program extra steps extra failure points so and what if you want to do something very low power consumption, basically running on few solar cells rather than like you know a whole solar panel you want to run on view few solar cells. this puppy has integrated uh, micro sd card so and because of the so many pins which mind you is more than uh, you know gpio pin count of uh, raspberry pi you can have lots of sensors from humidity to wind speed to wind direction to whatever you fancy you can have a lot of data combined into something and it will directly uh, keep writing that into sd card so amazing things can be done and not to mention it also has a like a direct support for uh, encoding ethernet so if you know what you're doing you can even make this into you know what we call power over ethernet so you just have one node uh, plucked on somewhere connected via ethernet you don't even have to worry about power and it is very power efficient compared to raspberry pi this is like running on nothing so a lot of things can be done on this so it's a very good uh, like you know buy so if it's just a 
take Arduino, make it better. Why should not everybody buy it? Well, it has certain consequence to it. The consequence is basically uh, it relies on Arduino's IED. Now, Arduino's IED is inherently 8-bit. You can extract more functionality. You can activate 10-bit uh, DAC or even 16-bit if you want, if you know the coding, but that's the inherent limitation. It's the codes that you follow, you have to change them. Now, uh, the documentation is quite amazing. It will not take you uh, long to do that, but it's something that you have to think about. It's like, oh, hey, bro, bro, I, I'm supposed to get like, you know, more values. I, I'm only getting, let's say, uh, 256 value. Like, what the hell is happening? There is, you have to do a code change. So that inherently, because you are, they are trying to adapt IED to something, uh, the code is, could be a bit more, uh, like, you know, challenging, so to say. It's not unsolvable and it will just require, after few, first few programming codes, you'll be like, yeah, I got this. But it is something that you have to figure out. Then we come to the final fact. That is like the actual nailing of it. There are many competitors of almost everything, but unless people use it, it's useless. For example, Raspberry Pi, there has hundreds of competition out there, but do you even know most of the competitors' names? Simple reason, community support is zero. Same goes here. There are uh, TNC, while it has a very vibrant community, while it's growing, while it's uh, like, you know, taking the music industry by storm, but it does not have the community that even comes close to Arduino. Basically, uh, I'm making my first project, uh, basically, my my button box 32 button box with a uh, rotary encoder and all that jazz uh, can i do this in teensy absolutely can i find a tutorial for that good luck with that so that's the reality of it you have to be a bit more uh forefront uh forefront basically you have to put a bit more labor into it in order to get something out of it so if you want to make a robot you can make amazingly good robot undeniably so like uh, there is a robot dog that is being built on teensy and it's they tried arduino mega three of them and then they're like yeah this is too much hassle just remove all the three and put one teensy that was the difference and but again still you have to know the course the, so the flexing part you have to be very mindful of that so community means low support so if you can deal with that if you can like okay i can actually read the spreadsheet from let's say uh arm cortex engineers and like figure out the codes i can write the library then it's the most powerful most amazing thing most low budget thing you can get but if you can't do that this will be very painful for you so please be mindful, select the project that you want to do, see what kind of tutorials you have, see what kind of uh, code learning experience you're gonna get, then jump into it. So be mindful of that aspect. So this was my presentation on Arduino's uh, another competitor known as Tinsy. I hope you liked this video, uh, learned from it, uh, liked it, enjoyed it. In that scenario, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment, and please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.